Hey everybody, so today back at it again. We got another MacBook Pro liquid spill repair. Man, you guys just love these liquid spills, huh? We've been getting a lot more of the older ones recently, like the 1466 and the 1398. I don't know why, but we have been getting more of those recently. There's a ton of them coming in and we love it. Keep bringing them in. We will love to fix them for you. This one is a 2015 um, 15 inch MacBook Pro. Still a very nice machine. It does take at least Big Sur. I think it still takes Monterey, actually, the latest one. I think it still does up until that point. I think this is the last one that is going to take Monterey. So it's still pretty important to fix these and to um, get these up and running because they still do very well, especially for today's. Especially they have like an i7 SSD, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and all those things. Those are still pretty good for I by today's specs. Very nice machine. So let's just go ahead, take a look at it, and see really what the issue is. All right, so let's just take it open and... Let's see what is going on. So since we know it's a liquid spill, let's just take a uh, the battery and I'll just take a little quick look to see. We like to do like a nice little scan just to see where the corrosion or anything else might be. And you actually do see those little sticker here. It looks like that is an iFixit sti sticker and maybe they replaced the screen. And we do see that the battery has been replaced. This isn't um, a normal battery and you can e easily tell by looking at this if I grab this here, this looks like it's going to come out pretty easy. See how loose that is? See how it's already moving? It shouldn't be moving. So definitely this battery has been replaced and we are going to have to at least replace the tape on this. And that's not even starting the repair yet or even taking a real look at it. Alright, so here's our big problem. Whenever we see usually like a, this exclamation point, it usually does mean it's some type of power IC chip. So we do see this is the U7200, and you can see it's a ghost with a lot. It's a very important component, and you can see the word CPU a lot, and that usually means it has something to do with the CPU and a power IC chip for the CPU. We can see it all over here that it is completely, it's completely corroded, and at least on the, at least that part, and we can take a look underneath. You can see how real bad it is. Most of the time for this, something like this, um, we could try to run it through the ultrasonic, but it may need to be replaced as well. But we'll go ahead and uh, we'll take a look at that. Again, we're a tech shop, so we do have the component here if we really do need to. All right, so we're back from the ultrasonic. So this is for the U7200. You can see it didn't do a perfect job, but it did a lot, made everything a lot better. The ultrasonic isn't always good enough to fix everything, even though it does make it look a lot better and it does get underneath the components. It does a very good job. Um, in this case, there is a bad resistor on the side here next to the U7200, and we're definitely going to have to uh, remove uh, this component, and we're going to do a little bit of an overflow for the IC chip just to make sure it gets a little bit better, so the flux gets actually a little bit underneath it a little bit better, and we want to definitely remove this resistor. Now you can see that um, the pad is very damaged here from the corrosion. And uh, the, the right side isn't too bad, and we can work with it, but the left side is, is completely damaged there. And uh, what we need to do is we need to repair this pad in a way that it does connect back to the trace. So the damage is a little bit too much on the surface. So we, we want to dig the hole here. You can see we're going to keep on digging, and we're going to go expose the board to see where the trace is, and we're going to connect the pad directly to where the trace is supposed to be. All right, so we have our replacement resistor. We're going to put it in place. We can make our own line to connect these two together. Let's go ahead, uh, finish up, and we can go ahead and then test it. Let's plug in that battery too. I think we just need that. This is enough at least just to get the power on. So let's do that. 
and see if it turns on. Power on usually by itself. You can see, oh, there we go. Got nice fan spin. It's fantastic. Orange light over here. And it looks like it's going to turn on. Um, we should get to, oh, there it goes. So you choose a network. All right, we don't got nothing here. There's no drive or anything, but it looks like it's turned on. That was pretty speedy, too. Put some new thermal paste on there. Um, we can also put, obviously, the hard drive and everything, but we don't want to show customers data. So it does turn on. I uh, wasn't powered on before. We did do that fix there, and it is totally working fine. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please leave a like if you did. Please subscribe for more MacBook content. We also do liquid, a lot more liquid sewer repairs. We do lots of data recoveries and uh, lots of fun stuff as well. We try to keep you guys informed as much as we can. And see you guys in the next one. Bye.